Hey everyone, welcome back to the Thinkorswim tutorial series. In today's video, we're gonna go through the process of creating a dividend scanner in the Thinkorswim platform. Now, to start off with, we're gonna start by creating a basic template to weed out as many companies as possible. From there, I'll go through how you guys can add additional filters on top of that to really narrow down the list of companies to only those that you guys would actually be interested in investing in. So let's go ahead and jump right in. And first off, you obviously need to be on the scan tab. It's the fourth tab at the top of the page. And specifically, I want you to be on the stock hacker page because in this case, we're looking for individual stocks that match all of our criteria. Once you open up that page, this is exactly what you're gonna see when you first come here. This is the default layout for the scan tab. Down below here, you can see I've already got three filters in here. It's just the default filters. They're completely blank right now. We're not actually scanning for anything but these will be the ones that we start with. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. The first filter I wanna add is a simple one just based off stock price. So we're gonna start off by changing this net change box. We'll go ahead and click on that and we're gonna find last in here just based off the last traded price for that stock. As soon as we do that, we're gonna come over here to the min box just to the right of it. In this case, the lowest price stock I'm willing to trade is gonna be 10 bucks. So we'll go ahead and highlight that and type in 10. And then the maximum price I'm looking for in this case is gonna be, let's say 500 bucks. So we'll go ahead and throw in 500 there. The next filter down currently says volume, but we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And I wanna find market cap in millions in this drop down menu. Now that I found it, we'll go ahead and click on it. And then over here in the minimum box, we're gonna go ahead and type in 1000. So we'll just go ahead and throw in 1000 here. Now remember market cap is already in millions. So when I type in 1000, that's 1000 millions or a billion dollars. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that. We're not gonna put anything in the max column because I'm willing to trade companies that are worth $2 trillion like Apple, so no need to put a max in here. Now, as for the third filter that we've got in here, it's currently percent change, so that would be like, hey, I'm looking for companies that are up 2% today or down 2% today. For the dividend scanner, that doesn't really matter, so we're gonna go ahead and click on that, and instead, we're gonna use, let's just go off of PE for this one. So now that I found PE in here, we'll just go ahead and click on that. From there, I'm actually gonna set the minimum as zero, which basically just means they have been profitable in the past year, have had some earnings in the past year, so we'll put zero here. And to the right of that, I'm gonna set the max column as, let's just do 40 for this example. So for this, what we've essentially said is we want the company to be profitable, but we don't want it to be a super high growth company. So this is gonna filter out companies like Tesla or Palantir or anything that's really high growth where people are paying a lot of money with the expectation that that company is gonna grow significantly in the future. Because remember, this is gonna be a dividend scanner. We're not necessarily hoping that this company grows significantly, although that would be nice. We're instead looking for a consistent dividend to come our way. So those are three of the basic ones. We've got PE zero to 40, market cap over a billion, and then the stock price between 10 and 500. The next thing we're gonna add is gonna be the most important for this one. It's gonna be the dividend yield. So let's come up here to add a filter. This one's gonna be a stock filter. So we're gonna go ahead and click on stock down here. You'll see a new filter has just been added over here and right off the bat it says beta. We're not actually gonna use that one. So let's go ahead and click on it. We'll scroll all the way down to the bottom where we should find yield, and there it is, dividend yield. So let's go ahead and click on that. Now, this is really gonna be personal to you, what you guys feel most comfortable investing in, whether or not you want something with a really high dividend yield or maybe a low dividend yield, but maybe more expected growth in the underlying stock. But you guys can play around with this on your own and see what you're comfortable with. Um, in this case, we're just gonna put the minimum as a 1% dividend yield. So we'll throw one in here. And I'm also gonna put a max. I don't want the max to be any more than, let's say 7%. And mainly the reason for that being that if it's over 7%, there's probably a reason for that. Now that doesn't have to always be the case, but what I'm saying is, is that that stock price is probably artificially low right now and the company may not be able to keep up the dividend that it's paying. So even though the dividend yield says, hey, it's 10% right now, if the company ends up having to cut its dividend, that yield will go down significantly. So what I'm trying to get rid of is those companies that have an artificially high dividend yield and won't be able to keep that up in the future. But that's some of the basic stuff that we want to scan for. Now, the very last thing that I wanna add in here as our basic template to go off of is gonna be volume. Really, I just wanna ensure that this stock is actually liquid. I wanna be able to get in and out of it fairly easily if I need to. I don't wanna get stuck holding the bag if I can't sell it to somebody at a fair price. Now, for this one, I don't actually wanna use the basic stock volume filter. I instead wanna come up here to add a filter. I'm gonna come down to adding a study filter, so we'll go ahead and click on that. From there, you can see a study filter has now been added over here on the left-hand side, and by default, it says ADX crossover. All we're gonna do is go ahead and click on that filter right there, ADX crossover. We're gonna come all the way down to where it says volume because we wanna add a volume filter. 
Just to the right of that, we're gonna see a few different boxes there, but the one we're gonna click on is average volume. Now, in most cases, you could probably just leave it as the default right here, and really all that it's saying is, I want this company to trade on average more than a million shares a day, and that's comparing it to the past 50 trading days. So basically, whatever company that pops up in this list here, on average has traded at least a million shares a day compared to the past 50 trading days. If we wanted to change that, we could highlight the number 50 here. Let's say we only wanted to compare it against the last 20 days, so we'll type in 20. And let's say we're willing to give up a little bit of liquidity. So we're willing to drop this down to only 500,000 shares, which is still fairly liquid. We'll, we'll probably be able to get in and out of it fairly easy if we need to. But that's the basic stuff, the basic criteria that I would kind of set as your foundation for finding dividend payers out there. Maybe you wanna change the yield a little bit. Maybe you wanna change the PE ratio a little bit, but this is a good foundation, a good starting point. Now, using this as the baseline, let's go ahead and hit scan and see how many companies out there in the world right now meet all of our criteria. And you can see here that there are quite a few. There are 516 companies out there in the world that meet all of these criteria. So this is where you guys would come in and start adding your own filters to really narrow down this list to only those companies that you would actually wanna trade. Now I will point out some simple stuff. So the first one being, let's say you only wanted to trade companies that trade in the S&P 500, for example. Well, if we wanna do that, we could come up here to the very top where it currently says scan in all stocks. If you go ahead and click on that, this is where you can narrow it down by a certain watch list. For this one, we wanted to do it based off the S&P 500, so I'm gonna come down here to S through W, and looking to the right, I can see S&P 500 right here. So let's go ahead and click on that, and we're gonna hit the scan button again to narrow down this list. And you can see now that we just got rid of half of those companies as results. There's now only 256 results, and all of these companies, not only do they meet all of our search criteria, they also are all in the S&P 500. Now, if we wanted to narrow this down even further, let's say we have an opening in our portfolio for a healthcare company. We, we're not really exposed to healthcare and we wanna get a little bit more healthcare in our portfolio. What we could do is we could come up here to the intersect with column. Let's go ahead and click on that. From there, we could then come down to the buy industry section and you're gonna see that there are a lot of industries in here, energy, materials, industrials. But in our example, we need a healthcare company. So we're gonna come down here to healthcare. And in my case, I'm just gonna hit select all healthcare. Anything in that sector we're, we're happy with. So let's come over here and hit scan and see what comes up. So now you can see we've narrowed this list down quite a bit further. There's now only 17 companies that we really need to look through. So this is some good basic stuff, but from right here, it's kind of hard to tell based on what we were looking for, which one of these companies might be the best for us. So what I wanna to do to actually be able to see, hey, what does AbbVie pay out in dividends? Or what does Abbott pay out in dividends? Or what's their PE ratio? Because right now, I don't have any of those column headers right here. So to be able to see that, let's come over here to the right of our search results and click on this little gear icon. As soon as we do that, we can then come to the customize box, which brings up all of the different search results that we can add to our scan page. In our case, we wanted to add dividend yield. So we'll come up here to the search box and type in yield. We'll go ahead and click on yield here and add as an item. We can now see it's at the bottom here. One of my other criteria was also PE. So we'll go ahead and throw in PE up here. We'll go ahead and find it in the search results right here. There it is. And we'll add it as an item. Now to make a little bit of room, let me see if there's anything I can get rid of on this side panel. Nah, I kind of want all of this. So we'll leave it be and we'll just try and fit it in here. So go ahead and hit okay. And now you can see those two new columns that we just added. So we've got the dividend yield column and the PE ratio column. So now we can see that AbbVie has a 4% dividend yield and a 21 PE. We've got uh, Abbott Laboratories, much lower uh, dividend yield, only a one and a half dividend yield, but their PE ratio kind of suggests that there's more growth price into this company. But this is one way that you could kind of start to narrow down the list based on the things that you actually find important. We could also sort these companies by these columns. So let's say we wanted to look for the companies that have the highest dividend yield and kind of work our way down the list from there. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and click on the column yield right here. You'll see that it first sorts it by the lowest dividend yield first. So we're gonna go ahead and click on it one more time. And now we can see the highest dividend payer is actually Gilead followed by AbbVie. They also have very similar PEs right here, 12.96, 21.8. We could also see their PE from there. It looks like Gilead has a 12.96 PE and AbbVie has 21.81, but then you could kind of sort this from there and see which company you actually feel most confident holding for the long run. Now, moving on from that, I will also show you that there are a lot of other filters that you could narrow this list down by. So if we come up here to add a filter, from there you can see all of the different filter options like stock filters, option filters, fundamental filters. You could even incorporate study filters into this if you really wanted to. 
And then finally, right below that are pattern filters, although I really doubt you guys are gonna use that if you're searching for uh, dividend payers out there or long-term investments, but I just wanted to know it's there. I will say probably the most popular one you're going to be using for this kind of scan is gonna be the fundamental section. So if we go ahead and click on that, right off the bat, you can see it pre-fills as book value per share, and maybe you guys wanna use that. Or if you were to click on that, you could see a bunch of other fundamental metrics that might be important to you guys. Maybe you wanna make sure they have a, a certain price to cash flow or they have a certain net profit margin. This is what you guys really need to practice with and get more familiar with to really narrow down this list. I can't tell you the perfect criteria to look for. Some of this is really based off you, what you feel confident holding for the long run. But once you get comfortable with the scan filter or the, the scan page on Thinkorswim, this thing is going to open your eyes significantly. It's really gonna narrow down the companies that you're gonna look at on a daily basis, so you're really not wasting your time. Now, just as a quick example, we'll add one as a current ratio. Let me see if it's in here, current ratio. And let's say we wanted that to be greater than one just for this example, and we'll go ahead and hit scan again. There we go, there's only three that met our criteria. Now, once you're happy with the scan criteria that you've got set, I wanna make sure you guys save it. So come on up here to the three little lines in the upper right hand corner. From there, you're gonna see save scan query, which is what you're gonna click on to actually save the scan so you can access it in the future. For this one, we'll just go ahead and name it dividend test because I'm not actually gonna use this one. I've got one made for myself. So we'll go ahead and name this dividend test and we'll hit save. From there, you can now access that in the future or any other scans that you create by coming up here to the three little lines, going to load scan query, going to your personal list after that, and now we can see all of your personal scans that you guys have made, and then all you have to do is click on it to access the scan. Another cool thing about Thinkorswim is that you can actually turn these scans into watch lists, and it does that automatically after you save it. So if we come over here to my watch list section on the left-hand side, you can see this one's currently marked options. And this is a static watch list. It's one that I actually made myself. I put these companies in here. It's not a scan. But if we wanted to change it to that dividend test watch list that we just made, we could go ahead and click on it. From there, we're going to go all the way up to the top and click on our personal section of watch list. Looking to the right, you can then see the dividend test watch list, the one that we just made. And you'll notice it's got like a little purple circle next to it. And that just tells us that this is a dynamic watch list or a scan and it's constantly updating. So if we go ahead and click on that, you can now see all three of those results down below in our watch list. And if you use this for any amount of time, you'll notice that this thing is constantly updating. Anytime a new company meets your criteria, it'll pop up on here. Anytime a company no longer matches your criteria, it'll fall off this list. So it's very, very helpful. Maybe not as much for a dividend scanner, but definitely if you're gonna be more actively trading, it's nice to have things pop up and, and you're ready to go place a trade on that right then and there when it shows up on your watch list. But from here, now that we've got it on our watch list, we could come over here to the analyze page and make sure we're on fundamentals. And then we could just quickly go through these companies, analyze them and see if we'd actually wanna place some trades on them. See if they actually match our criteria, if the earnings look good, the growth look good, and we actually believe in this company in the future. And if we actually look at the dividend and it looks appealing to us. But I know that was a lot and I really hope this video helps. There is a ton of customization and near limitless things that you guys can scan for in here, but this should get you off to a good start and you guys can start creating scans for yourself. But if there is anything else you guys have questions on or a certain filter that is confusing you, just leave it down below and I'll help out as best I can. Also, be sure to check out some of my other tutorial videos on Thinkorswim if you guys do want to learn more. And I will say there are also several other videos about other scans that I've made on here. So be sure to check those out if you guys found this one helpful. But we'll go ahead and wrap the video up here. I hope you guys all have an amazing rest of your week and I'll see you all in the next video.